Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me to take a first look and check out the brand new Ferrari P80C. It's their latest unique one-off creation to come from the Special Projects division, codenamed SP36 and based on the Ferrari 488 GT3 race car. It's the first special project they've actually made on the race car platform at all, and in this case they call it an original interpretation of the sports prototype concept, calling on many design cues that come from Ferrari's legendary motorsports history and heritage. So let's explore the new car, discover a bit more about it, and check out the Ferrari P80C. I think it's indisputable that once again, Ferrari have knocked it out of the park when it comes to the design of one of their special project cars. There are a few things that are particularly interesting though about the new P80C, and we're going to have a good look around the car, talk about the design and where some of their styling cues have come from. But the special projects program itself is indeed, as the name suggests, a very special thing. Ferrari invite customers, almost a reward for their loyalty, for building up their collections of Ferrari cars, perhaps taking part in the XX program, or driving and running F1 cars through Corsa Clienti, or maybe they're taking part in the Cavalcade owners rallies. But it's an opportunity to work directly with Ferrari, to build, design, to imagine all the way from inception to the final finished product, a completely bespoke car that they offer input to, they can name, they can determine which direction they want it to head and where the inspirations come from. And in this case, it has the code name SP36, the 36th special project. Now, over a year ago, we saw the launch of the SP38 Debra because the name comes from when it was originally commissioned. In this case, back in 2015. So it's been a four year process to go all the way through to create the P80C as we have it again with a name that is directly given to the car by the owner. Now what stands out to me about this model is that it is the first time we've had a Ferrari SP car that is based on a race car as opposed to one of Maranello's road cars. In this case the 488 GT3 which brings with it a number of benefits in terms of a longer chassis using the GT3 race car chassis which is 50 millimeters five centimeters longer than the GTB's car which gives more opportunity more room to play for the designers in terms of the aesthetics of the car itself but we can get onto that in more detail later on. The car has two different configurations as well, different wheel options, you can remove the wing too if you'd like to display it at a concourse event, but there is only one of these, and no doubt it carries a rather high price tag as well. But let's dive into this then, in terms of the design, in more detail. In order to purchase one of these cars, one has to be a long-standing Ferrari customer with a big awareness of the brand. And that's why the P80C has design cues that come from the likes of the 330 P3, P4, the 206 SP, the 250 LM in terms of some of the interior, but it's a track car as opposed to a road car. That means it does away with the rules and requirements, both in terms of homologation for the road, but also in terms of the GT3 racing class, which means it's completely unrestricted, unleashed. Looking around the car, even the color is actually called Rosso Vera. That means true red in Italian, a tribute back as well. We'll get to some of these design cues, but you look at it, and overall, it's a very pretty shape. The aesthetics, the low roof line, the elongated actual length of the car as well, but mixed with the aggression of the aerodynamics. Those are all in exposed carbon fiber, the rear wing, the diffuser, the side skirts, the front splitter. So the pretty elements in red, the aerodynamic track focus components left in the exposed black carbon fibre. Around the front of the car it has quite a long nose but it comes down to a very very low height with small openings for almost imagining headlights down below. No full size headlights and tail lights are found, a track car to be driven in the day. You can see the exaggerated size of the arches both over the front wheels and the rear just again swooping back to some of the traditional looking Ferrari race cars of the 60s, always very good looking cars. The windscreen almost wraps around 
with the black A pillars and the way it's very low to that roof line going all the way towards the side scoop separated into two parts for the intercoolers just behind those side windows but creating that black silhouette that runs around the car very heavily tinted in these pictures but certainly aiding and assisting very much to the design even if it may look if I can say so quite like the design of the Ford GT. Coming back down towards the front you can see the large nostrils for the cooling with a central uh, almost spine running towards them. When you go up over the roof you have that T-wing which just extends the appearance of the roof line as well before you get that slashed rear deck lid underneath which that twin turbo V8 lies. Now at the back the rear wing, the large rear wing, of course it's a race car but this is quite interesting because it's actually removable. So the car has two different appearances as you see it here with the 18 inch single nut wheels and the fixed rear wing but you can actually swap the wheels to a 21 inch uh, road style set and remove the wing completely to give it more of a concourse presence. The owner of the car requested that it would have those two different appearances so that it can be shown at events in the future and it can literally be switched from one straight into the other. Now when you get to the interior, of course, it is very much race car. You can see the blue Alcantara seats, those tribute back to the 250 LM, a car that had blue seats like this car contrasting with the red exterior. Inside though, it's all carbon fibre inside the cage. You can see the carbon steering wheel, the centre stack, the door cards, all about saving weight. The bucket seats are of course carbon fibre as well, but in here, very much GT3 car in terms of the controls available, the radio, the pit limiter, uh, all of the headlights and things that you expect from a race car, the control, sorry, I should say, um, in terms of flashing lights and things, and then of course six-point harnesses as well, a racing dashboard display. If you look at the car, equally the body panel's removable. It's a race car th philosophy. You want to be able to quickly change and access things. I'm not sure if the car is going to be run during the XX program days or completely private days for the owner of this car, for the, well, current, I was going to say eventual owner, but the owner who has been working with the program throughout. But you can see how it dissects and breaks up. Then back there in the rear, or rear mid-engine I should say, that famous 3.9 litre twin turbocharged V8, Ferrari's engine of the year, which now they've paid tribute with, or two with the new F8 Tributo model, but this is in a state of tune to 670 horsepower. GT3 cars would be restricted more to, say, 500 horsepower unless they were running unrestricted, but this is like as found in the 488 GTB. Back there though, very stripped out as you can see, no weight or extra really uh, packaging used wherever it isn't absolutely required. Around the back of the car itself, one very aggressive looking diffuser. Carbon fibre naturally, but you can see the different fins to direct airflow around, the almost end plates that you have sticking out towards the bottom, and also the, the double style nature of it uh, on either side surrounding a central uh, reversing light in the middle and those very aggressive looking tailpipes as well, but a setup very much like that of a race car. This is one of my favourite views though. When you see how low that front nose is, it's akin a little, I would say, to the Aston Martin Vulcan. Again, a track-only car because it doesn't need to have pedestrian crash regulations which stipulate that the bonnet has to be up to a certain height. So doing away with that allows the creation of this very aerodynamic design. The widest point at the front wheels tapering in behind them towards the wider arches just towards the back of that where there is actually a spoiler integrated into the bodywork beneath the larger fixed rear wing that sits above that as well as the T-wing. This car has three wings, literally. Um, that's slightly extreme and you can see it wearing the Pirelli P0 uh, representation tyres that you have on this. But around the back, just look at that. Look at the way you have those almost strip kind of tail lights back there flanking that wing, which beneath it has a floating prancing horse emblem. The Ferrari badge is worn there, sitting literally beneath the rear wing, but hovering somehow, attached in a way that it floats. And I think that's a really cool touch. It looks very, very smart. Although no doubt isn't necessarily the most aerodynamic because that would cause a small amount of drag, although we're talking a very small amount and I'd say it's worth it for the aesthetics of the car. Out on track though, look at its poise, look at how low to the ground it is, look at the shape of the front splitter, the way it raises up in the centre and lower towards the outsides where it's really right down there on the tarmac looking amazing in the Italian sunshine. It has to be said that when Ferrari create these special projects they have a fantastic habit of making them look incredibly good 
when you see them in all of their glory out and about and the colour of this car as well in the sunshine. It looks very similar to Rosso Corsa, Ferrari's more traditional colour, but in this case, like I said, it's Rosso Vera. And you can see also above those rear side intakes, the racing fuel filler that you have up on what is almost a, a raised buttress, almost a flying buttress. Again, a little bit in style towards the Ford GT, the way it comes out of the roof line towards the back, but of course an aerodynamic uh, and functional part of the design as well. Now they produced a number of sketches because of course this process starts with the customer in the very early days to determine which direction they want this project to take. And Ferrari have been very uh, excited by the fact that they've created this on a race car model as opposed to one of the road cars, although we've seen cars before based on well, more or less everything from the range. Some of the limited series cars um, like the Speciale and the TDF, but none based on the hypercars, the LaFerrari for example at this stage. So it goes through a whole host of different sketches to lead towards the end result. And you can see how that builds up, how the car is built out of a clay model. It's almost just an endless opportunity for the customer to constantly have input, to make some changes, to update the design, to say what they like, to talk with the highest employees at Ferrari, to build, well, this completely unique car. And that's what I find so amazing about the opportunity that customers can do this. Customers can go to Ferrari and create a car that is exactly what they want. And for example, I immediately have some ideas in my mind of what I would go down and which path I would try and take if I was ever to be in such a position. But of course, like I said, it's a reward for very loyal Ferrari customers. And those who have taken delivery of such cars do tend to own quite a fleet of Ferrari models across their entire garage. I think that's more or less everything there is then to cover about this new Ferrari P80C, the latest special product project. These cars run into the millions and especially when it's been a project of this length because no doubt that means a lot of going backwards and forwards making changes and iterations to the car but I think it's a very interesting thing to be able to do and this is a very good looking race car it has to be said. Normally racing requires almost I would say ugly design elements to meet the regulations but here unrestricted, unleashed, They've turned the 488 GT3 into something truly special for one individual lucky owner. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this first look to learn a little bit more about the car itself. Thank you very much for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.